backcourt. They rely so heavily on them for scoring. Maddox, a double-figure scorer in only his sophomore season. And Frank Sanker, the senior, the consummate leader, has done a great job in his Vanderbilt career. He's been outstanding for Vanderbilt and Coach Jan Van Bredekoff. Neither team closed the regular season the way they wanted to. Hence the second season being underway and a chance to make noise where the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee is concerned. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Bell South. Bell South, it's all here. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. And by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. Plymouth has new ways to shop for a car. Hop on the internet at home. Or visit Plymouth Place, our interactive computer at your local mall. Where you can create your own customized Plymouth Neon, Voyager, or Breeze. Take a test drive on the Information Superhighway. Where you'll discover that Plymouth is fun, affordable, and a whole new way to shop for a car. I am one with my Pizza Hut Rawlings game ball. I am a human highlight film. I Yo, hurry up. am awesome. Come on. But I ate the whole pizza that comes with the ball. So I Stink. am incredibly slow. I'm leaving. The Game Ball, $4.99 with any pizza. Keep the ball, share the pizza. Fool, you'll love the stuff we're made of. Presenting the Yardman 3-in-1 self-propelled mower. It mulches, bags, discharges, has a six-speed drive, and a powerful engine. All for the price of much tamer mowers. Yardman Mowers and Tractors. Made in America. Are you ready? Let's go. Get out and play. Give whatever you've got. You like that? Huh? Gatorade. Life is a sport. Drink it up. Welcome back to New Orleans, Louisiana, at the Louisiana Superdome. Game two of the first round of the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Let's take a look at our Bell South starting lineups for the Auburn Tigers. Guard oriented, as we mentioned, but Ray Donald has had his moments, including a buzzer beater to knock off Florida in Gainesville. Franklin Williams will join him at the other bookend. Alvin Jefferson in the middle with Weems and Flanagan for Cliff Ellis. Last year's Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year in his second season, a winner everywhere he's been, beginning at South Alabama in the 70s and early 80s. And for the Vanderbilt Commodores, neither team really with the kind of low post play that you'd like to have. So Pride, Secker, and Maddox, the three-guard offense. Austin Bates in the middle. He'll be spelled from time to time with uh, Malik Evans, who will move to the center position, believe it or not, and Malik will be the other starter. Very active. And Jan Van Bredekoff, 1974 SEC Player of the Year, trying to get it done in the 90s. He needs a win today. Survive in advance if you want to play in the other tournament. It's not sleepy time down south anymore. From Kentucky to the Gulf Coast, from Texas to the Carolinas, business is growing and investment opportunities are springing up right in our own backyard. Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm, brings information on all these opportunities to your doorstep. They find regional stocks and bonds that are tomorrow's blue chips. That's why smart Southerners turn to Morgan Keegan for investment advice. Morgan Keegan, capital for the South. When a traffic jam was two cars in the same town, 
Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivans, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. We've been helping engines last for a long time. Mobile, changing oil for over 125 years. Joe, our nationwide insurance agent, said it reminded him of his first house. It needed a little work. Uh, Patty and her husband got their friends together. We got the place looking great. Yeah, I was able to help a little. I mean, since they now have a homeowner's policy with Nationwide, I could offer them a home car discount. It was a really nice little housewarming gift. I'm glad Joe saved his money because we still have a few little things that need to be fixed up. Like, um... Nationwide is on your side. If you've been thinking about Ford Escort, think fast. Because right now, you can get 1,000 cash back or 4-8 financing on a 96 three-door Escort or Escort GT. With standard dual airbags, AM, FM, stereo, AC, and more, Ford Escort is priced hundreds less than Civic. But hurry, 1,000 cash back or 4-8 financing on the 96 Escort three-doors for a limited time. Your Ford dealers, the driven one. 1,000 cash back on Escort. See your local Ford dealer today. Prior to the start of our game, our broadcast partner, Dave Baker. Dave? Thanks so much, Tim. You know, we've talked an awful lot about Wes Flanagan and can he go. If you look at his left shoulder, they've actually got a brace on it. It's designed to loosen it up to try to keep heat in it. They say he's just going to have to play through this subluxation where the shoulder actually popped out of the socket and popped back in. He's going to try to play through the pain at tournament time. You can see that brace through the top of the T-shirt that Dave was mentioning and the tap is controlled to Vanderbilt. Not a lot of depth for Auburn. They only play seven or eight guys and not really a great backup point guard. Probably Phil Thomas would step in and take Flanagan's place if he has to go out. So Flanagan needs to play and play well today for Auburn. Malik Evans, good look. And the bucket for Austin Bates. Pretty ball mover, movement from Vanderbilt. Howard Pride with the penetration and Malik Evans a nice pass to Bates for the little 10-footer. Vanderbilt had a strong SEC performance last year, you recall, blowing out LSU. And Alvin Jefferson gets the easy one to tie the game. But they were even more impressive against Arkansas in a game, very frankly, they could have and maybe should have won in last year's Southeastern Conference tournament quarterfinal. Jan Van Bredekoff has done well in tournaments as Vanderbilt's head coach. They did perform very effectively here in the SEC tournament last year. Malik Evans with a finger roll, and the spacing in both half-court sequences for Vanderbilt has been outstanding. Vanderbilt moving the basketball extremely well. They match up well against Auburn and the changing defenses that Auburn likes to use. Vanderbilt with good shooters, good passers, really move the ball well and play well against the Auburn Tigers. And we just mentioned spacing and lack thereof forces that turnover for the Tigers. Franklin Williams and Flanagan got a little bit too close together, and the ball just bounces out of bounds. I think the, the difference in today's game, Vanderbilt and Auburn, will be the shooting. Whoever shoots the basketball well from outside, I think, will win this ball game. Pride off the pit from Sucker. Well, Frank Sucker. The commander of the trays sets that mean pick that allows the three-pointer to go from Pride. Franklin Williams gets Bates airborne, count it, and a foul. Pretty seal down low. Franklin Williams posts up strong inside, and West Flanagan finds an easy bucket inside for Williams. Here you see Williams, no one guarding him. He just floats free, gets Bates in the air, and drops it in off the glass. Williams a 68% free throw shooter. You see the, the numbers. Rebound taken down by Jefferson. And another look for Auburn. Alvin Jefferson getting his first start of the season today here in the SEC tournament. He has really played well since the Arkansas game a couple of weeks ago. Burke's confidence was shaken. As many of you know, and a turnover there by the Tigers. Their 
as you look at Alvin Jefferson, the junior out of Forsyth, Georgia, and Macon, Georgia Junior College. And you'll see a lot of different defenses from Auburn. They're a very difficult team to prepare and play against because they change defenses so much. Looks like they're in a triangle and two defense right now with Flanagan matched up on Secker, Weems on Maddox, and the other three guys playing a zone defense. Howard Pride should be able to shoot over the top of this triangle and two. Cates in the middle. Pulled down by Williams. Auburn needs to get something going offensively. They haven't been very effective in their first few trips down the court. Jefferson, nice spin move and the window. Alvin, welcome to the starting role. Not a very experienced player. Only started playing basketball as a junior in high school. So four years later, he's still learning the game, but has excellent athletic ability and really developing into a fine player for Auburn. <laughs> Pride, very athletic move, getting it inside to Malik Evans. You know, I really believe that Pride is, is one of the real finds in this Vanderbilt team. You, you, he gets lost sometimes. Now, here's that spin move we were talking about. Alvin Jefferson, offensive game really developing, and he makes a beautiful move around Austin Bates to bank it in for two. Loose ball, Drew Maddox comes away with it. Second one of the best in the league at getting steals. Pride, tough pass. Harum's off the backboard, and Lance Weems has it. A little different tempo in game two. <laughs> Just a little bit. Donald, <laughs> he did not call glass. Oh, my God. Ray Donald on the wing, pulls up and banks it in. A kinder, softer backboard <laughs> and rim. Early on in this tilt, the Auburn Tigers leading Bandy by two. Just underway here in New Orleans. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. To make the new Plymouth Grand Voyager even more versatile, they simply went back to the drawing board. And voila, a driver's side sliding door was born. Now it's twice as easy to get into. Twice as easy to get out of. Twice as easy to load. Twice as easy to unload. Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. I've got one chance a season to make this course look beautiful. You burn your lawn, your neighbors see it. I burn this, millions see it. You want to take chances? Go ahead. Me, I use Scott's. Turf Builder has Scott's mistake-proof granules. They feed when the grass needs it. No over- or under-feeding like you can get with ordinary fertilizers. It's not like golf. You can't make it up on the next hole. You don't want to blow it? Use Scott's. Mistake-proof granules. That's the Scott's difference. Let's talk about Social Security Disability. Who should collect benefits? People who can't work because of a physical or mental condition. But saying you should receive disability doesn't mean you will without effective legal help. I'm attorney Mickey Beth Stiller, and I'd like to help you. Attorney Mickey Beth Stiller, Montgomery 834-5544, Selma 872-5545, or 1-800-843-5542. Auburn leading it by a score of 9-7. to seven. We're at the 1996 Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament. Tim Brando, Barry Booker, Dave Baker, our host, Bob Kessler. And uh, game two, as advertised, perimeter-oriented. Already the flow of this game of the 94-foot vernacular. Breaking presses and then getting open opportunities and not waiting too long to launch. Auburn still in their triangle and two defense. That's why we've seen a lot of Howard Pride early in this game. And the foul spotted up top by David Dodge. 
throws against Lance Keen. His first. Tigers have matched up against Secker and Maddox, trying to take them out of the game and let Fried, Evans, and Bates try and beat you if they can. Pat Burke coming into the game. Franklin Williams sits down. By the way, our officiating crew today, John Clockerty, the veteran, joined by David Dodge and R.T. Day. Three of the best in the league. Quite a few games with a broken left leg. He suffered on December 9th. Both uh, Malik Evans and Howard Pride went out of that ball game with injuries, and that had a big impact on Vanderbilt. And they really struggled without those two players in the lineup. Donald, that's his spot. He won the Florida game with that shot from that very location. Flanagan up high. Well, the brace does not alter that perimeter jumper nor that smile. Wes Flanagan shooting it very well. Looked very good on that three-point shooting opportunity. Twelve to eight. Auburn by four. Drive. Howard Pride making the Tigers pay for not guarding. He stepped out beyond the three-point line and knocked down two of them. See, I, I love his game because he, he's got some inside game as well as outside game, Barry. Physical enough to do a job by driving to the basket. Donald answers on the other end. 14 to 11. Tigers by three. We go back and forth. Both these teams very explosive, good scoring clubs. We're going to see a high scoring affair today. Maddox. Evans follows. Malik Evans. And the dribble penetration. Drew Maddox can't get the shot down, but he draws a lot of attention, and that leaves Evans alone for the follow. Donald with the pop out, waits for the pick and roll. Gets it from Burke. <laughs> Falling away. That's part of the game that is uh, shaken here, but one of the reasons he didn't start today. A little hesitant. <laughs> Went a long way before he put that shot up, too. May have taken a walk. Pride. Kicks it back out to Frank Sucker. Good D by Alvin Jefferson to cut off Howard Pride going to the basket. Pride again. Oh, I'll say. Playing with plenty of it. Howard Pride enjoying the New Orleans Superdome, shooting the ball extremely well to this point in the ball game. Three of three for Pride. Wings. His rainbow won't fall. Evans the outlet. Now Pride. He has Drew Maddox on the other wing. Finds him. Drew, great look. The Bates. He wasn't ready for the pass. Now ball just slipped right through his hand. Good penetration by Maddox. And uh, Drew got a hand on that one. It'll be out of bounds to Auburn. Here's Maddox penetrating, getting near the lane, drawing a lot of attention. Austin Bates just unable to handle the basketball. Would have been an easy opportunity for him if he had caught the ball. Drew sits down. And Buzz Peterson chatting with the... Uh, Austin Bates, so both of them uh, getting a brief blow. Spaltro has come into the game. Caldwell just in, takes the shot. And Lance Weems comes away with a loose ball. You see, every time Lance Weems gets a look at the basket, there's a lot of pressure on him. Vanderbilt does not want him to step out and have a big day shooting a three-point shot. Burke has range for a big guy. Now he gets the offensive rebound. Weems again. Boy, that was an ugly shot. Pressure defense. Howard Pride really rushed out at him as he was getting that shot underway. Auburn doing a great job on the offensive board, getting several opportunities. Burke again a long rebound. This is their fourth crack in this sequence. Weems again. Well, as ugly as the earlier one was, that was just as pretty as the other one was ugly. Lance Weems, no conscience. And you give the guys that many opportunities, you know that finally Auburn will put the ball in the hole. 17-16, Tigers by one. 
Whitehead on the floor for the first time. Underneath Evans. Fugini. Out of bounds to Vanderbilt. Gianni Cugini checking into the game, and what a story he has become this year for Vanderbilt. A young man that has really toiled with some injury difficulty. Dan Van Bredekoff playing D, but you can't stop that one. We'll be back. Last Saturday, my wife Lisa and I went shopping, you know, we're not paying any attention. That's when it hit me. What would happen to our family if Lisa weren't around anymore? Well, recently I've been trying to get Dave and Lisa to review their life insurance. We then called Kim. She's our nationwide insurance agent. Lisa now has the life insurance she needs. Sometimes I think about what almost happened. But thanks to Kim, I don't worry about what might happen. Nationwide is on your side. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Right guard, pure power, clear gel. An astoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff. Protect the one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Right guard, clear gel. Anything less would be uncivilized. Here in the South, we have a tradition of service you won't find anywhere else. And at Bell South, we're helping businesses serve their customers more effectively every day. With more advanced technology than ever before. Business is growing faster here than in any other part of the country. It's easy to see why. Bell South, it's all here. is changing daily. The faculty and staff at JP Tech are here to help you meet this challenge by offering courses such as office technology, which is centered around the business computer, apparel and designs for the clothing business, and upholstery. JP Tech will help prepare you to succeed in today's business world. Come out and see why nobody knows business like JP Tech. Auburn leading you're early in our ball game, 11.36 to play in the first half. As you look at Gianni Cugini, we touched on what an amazing story he had become. You talk of injuries and fighting through them. Though. His far more serious, and his bravery is really seen in just being on the floor right now. He had a bruised spleen that he suffered at South Carolina in a road game, and he had to sit out nine games. The doctors were telling him telling him that there's a one in 100 chance that he played that he could die on the basketball court. He was willing to and wanted to play during that time. But since then, the injury has healed, and he's able to step out on the court and play safely. Really battled back through some tough times. Very physical guy. Off the back iron, that one didn't fall, but he had a pretty good look at it. With a team with no proficient center, his size can really help Vanderbilt having his bulk on the floor. They have no height, but they do have some added bulk with Eugenie's availability. He is the toughest screen setter for the Commodores, Gianni Eugenie. Max Whitehead looking to make a move against Caldwell. Falco pops out. Here's Pride, who has 10 points, three for three from downtown already. And Auburn still with the triangle of two defense. The small throw can't get it to fall. Berg calls it down. Runner across the lane from Billy Despalto. Tough shot. Now Auburn needs a little offense right now. They slow it down. Burke looks for Weems to pop out high. Boy, and Burke hits the deck hard, and that will be a push. I think Fugini may have been involved in that. He did pick up that foul, battling against Pat Burke for rebounding position. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say his back and his uh, 
elbows and his forearms are in pretty good shape, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's looking good out there. Doesn't mind the contact at all. I told him that at, at one point in time in his life, if he decides to become a, a fashion maven, uh, I want to wear one of his uh, articles of clothing. Caldwell knocks it down. Can you imagine uh, at the end of one of our games, we're saying Brando and Booker's wardrobe, courtesy Cugini? Gianni Cugini. Yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? It's a natural. Yeah. Big bucket for Auburn, that three-point shot from Darren Caldwell. Auburn extends a four-point lead. Maddox finds Whitehead, wide open. Max Whitehead, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. Excellent ball movement by Vanderbilt. Now with in this, uh, this triangle and two defense that Auburn's playing, Max Whitehead is the guy that will be available and, and able to make things happen because of the way Auburn is defending Vanderbilt at the other end. Lance Weems still drawing a lot of a lot of attention every time he gets he gets the ball behind the arc. Adrian Chilius has become the designated screener now for Auburn up high. Shot clock all the way down to four. Donald will have to force one. Gestaltro brings it down. Sucker to Maddox. Oh, sweet from Captain Commodore to his fellow backcourt mate. And another steal by Secker. Finding who else? Drew. And Caldwell pulls it down. Well, that was one that Mandy would love to have back. You can never relax with Frank, with Frank Secker on the court. That lazy inbounds pass. Secker just steps right in front of it and takes it away. Tied at 20 as we near the eight-minute mark. Here, we will see Frank Secker throwing the alley-oop to Air Maddox. Drew Maddox can dunk, but uh, I don't think he has one in a game in his career yet, but he's able to catch that alley-oop and drop it in off the glass. Beautiful feed from Drew Maddox, from Frank Secker to Drew Maddox. Eugenie picked up a second foul, and now he's taking a seat. Bates back on the floor. Jefferson in the lane. Sure. That, I think that's one of those depth perception problems with a shot. Many times you see those ugly ones uh, trying to get used to where they see the basket. That happens many times. Flanagan, the offensive foul. Player control foul against West. Well, Flanagan is fearless. You see him going to the basket strong. He apparently is not worried about that shoulder injury and is really playing well for Auburn so far. We are tied at 20. Not as much scoring of late, but entertaining in a big way. Are you ready? Let's go. Get out and play. Give whatever you've got. You like that? Gatorade. Good. Gatorade. Gatorade. Gotta get thirsty. Gatorade. 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 Life is a sport. Tough day. Drink it up. <laughs> When a traffic jam was two cars in the same town, Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivans, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. We've been helping engines last for a long time. Mobile, changing oil for over 125 years. All mortgage rates are near their lowest level in almost 20 years, creating an extremely favorable environment for buying or building a new home, as well as refinancing your existing mortgage. I'm Philip Cantrell, president of Alliant Mortgage, a subsidiary of First Montgomery Bank. We urge you to take advantage of this opportunity by calling our experienced staff for a free consultation. At Alliant Mortgage, we understand that mortgage loans should be centered around your needs, your goals, and your future. and Vanderbilt deadlocked at 20. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vitale presents the Direct TV Dish Out the Winners Sweepstakes. Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. 
side of this year's Southeastern Conference Tournament. This is day one and a much different atmosphere for these young men to acclimate to here at the Superdome. So far, Wes Flanagan trying to push the ball and keep Auburn into it. Drew Maddox, a counterpart on the offensive end for the Vanderbilt Commodores, anchored by Frank Sucker at the point. If you look at the, the three-point shooting, Vanderbilt hasn't missed. And Auburn with four three-pointers, and three of those have come courtesy of their backcourt. Auburn putting up more three-point shots at this point to Vanderbilt. I think that will be to their advantage today to continue to launch from beyond the arc. Williams rejected by Malik Evans. Loose ball to Bates. Alpha to Maddox. Nice block by Malik Evans. A nice scrappy play by Austin Bates to come up with a basketball. Max Whitehead wants it. Bates is open on the wing. Cliff Ellis is changing defenses designed to make non-shooters shoot as work to this point. That's exactly right. You want the other players on the court for Vanderbilt to beat you if you're Cliff Ellis. And I love that part of his defensive philosophy. Does not allow a team's strength to beat him. Loose ball and a sneak out by Maddox. He has Whitehead behind him. Nice move to the basket by Drew Maddox and a good outlet from Malik Evans and Vanderbilt playing well early in this ballgame. 20 second timeout taken by the Tigers. 6.39 remaining here in the opening half. Let's take a look at the, the last break down the floor with our Pizza Hut. You'll love this stuff play. And Vanderbilt, Frank Secker once again knocking the ball away. And Drew Maddox runs out, goes to the basket. And you love that stuff if you're a Commodore fan. Drew Maddox taking it to the hole and laying it in. About as close to a stuff as Drew would ever, <laughs> would ever get, right? Oh, uh, you're going to have Drew upset with you. He can dunk it. No, but you, you told me earlier he's not he, done it in the game. He hasn't done it in the game. Well, that's true. Don't put it off on me. <laughs> Burke finds Williams slashing to the hole. Good no call by the officials that time. A flop didn't work. Franklin Williams got close to the basket. A good shot, just couldn't get it down. Maddox hammered by his own teammate, Pride, who had been cut into the lane. There's Bates again. And Evans again. Malik Evans. Most of his points come on put back opportunity. 24-20, Vandy. Austin Bates likes that 15-footer facing the basket they just got. Couldn't get it down, but Malik Evans gets the follow. Malik is going to pick up that foul. Here's Wes Flanagan putting it on the floor, taking it hard at Malik Evans to draw that foul in that pick-and-roll situation. Take a look. Now, that would not be the, the shimmy or the... Uh, or the shag is uh, Cliff Ellis. We go, look at look at uh, Van Bredikoff up there. It's incredible. I mean, he assumes the coaching position more quickly than any other coach in the SEC. Hands on knees. He's getting with it, guys. Burke lost it on the way up. Great pass from Flanagan. Off the dribble. Burke really struggling with his offensive game. Andy on an 8-0 run, make it 10-0 in the last four and a half. Penetration and dish from Drew Maddox to find Pax Whitehead, who is an excellent finisher when you get him in the open court. 26-20. Five minutes remaining in the opening half. Caldwell dishes to Jefferson, who draws the foul from DeSpalfro. Auburn's been sitting on 20 for a long time. They have not scored in quite some time. Five minutes. Five minutes without scoring. Now we see Jefferson going to the foul line. Auburn sends in number 42, Adrian Chilius. Drew Maddox putting it on the floor, getting it in the lane. 
A beautiful diagonal feed to Pax Whitehead, who goes to the reverse against the 6'11", Pat Burke. Jefferson in the line for the Tigers, two shots. Auburn bucket came courtesy Caldwell. He had a three-pointer with 9.46 remaining. And Burke is uh, listening to the assistants on the other end. He has really struggled with his offensive game. Jefferson remains in the game. It's a, the lone post player for Auburn. Whitehead, very deceptive game. Max Whitehead has, and it, you watch him play, and you say, well, how can he be that effective? And yet he is. He, he's just very consistent. Not a very good shooter, but he had all day to line that one up and get the laces right where he wanted it and put that one in. I think you or I could have hit that little 15-footed finish. Let's go, Number 42, Adrian Chilius. Chilius picked up that foul, a moving pick. Auburn really struggling right now. Giving up a lot of points here in the first half to Vanderbilt. Having trouble putting it in the basket on their end of the court. But well, Virginia was there, Maddox missed it. Now they'll work the pick and roll. He finds him this time. And Gianni can't hit it. Loose ball to Flanagan. It's a difficult shot, a fadeaway hook shot from Cugini trying to get it over Jefferson. And that is a low percentage shot. Offense is ruled early. Defense is beginning to catch up in the last five minutes. A steal by second. Maddox has Cugini with it and a pull up. Cugini keeps it alive. Pride draws the foul. Vanderbilt really out scrapping Auburn right now, getting to the loose balls. Frank Secker doing a great job defensively, coming up with steals, starting break opportunities for Vanderbilt. And here's Pride on the line after getting a, an offensive rebound. Auburn sits at number 13, Brian Smith, number 15. Secker outstanding. Second in the conference and steals as he pushes it up to Drew Maddox. Maddox can't get it, but Pride gets the rebound. He gets two shots at the line. Timeout. 341 remaining. And Bandy with a nine point cushion. Presenting the awesome Yardman Lawn Tractor with an automatic transmission, 17 and a half horsepower industrial engine. It bags, mulches, and discharges grass, all for the price of much tamer tractors. Yardman mowers and tractors, made in America. I am one with my Pizza Hut Rawlings game ball. I am a human highlight film. I Yo, hurry up. am awesome. Come on. But I ate the whole pizza that comes with the ball. So I Stink. am incredibly slow. I'm leaving. The game ball, $4.99 with any pizza. Keep the ball, share the pizza. Fool, you'll love the stuff we're made of. The new Plymouth Voyager was named Automobile Magazine's All-Star Minivan for 1996. Car and Driver ranked it in their 10 best automobiles of 1996. And not only does it surpass other minivans on the road, but with a 3-liter, 150-horsepower V6 engine, it has 36 times the cargo space of a Porsche 911 for about a third of the price. Nine-point lead for Vanderbilt, due in large part to this run of 
Today's nationwide insurance scholar athlete is LSU's Rogers Washington, the freshman from Franklin, completed his first semester last fall with a 3.0 GPA. Our congratulations to Rogers Washington, our nationwide insurance scholar athlete. He'll be on display later tonight in the nighttime session against South Carolina. We mentioned that run. 14 to 1, Vanderbilt has outscored the Auburn Tigers in the last 6.07. Caldwell hit a three, and since that time, Auburn's gone cold. Flanagan, joined now by Bryant Smith in the lineup, along with Caldwell, who throws up another three. So, end to end during the drought, it's been Caldwell with the trade. 30 to 24. The drought started after a Caldwell three-pointer, and it ends with a Caldwell three-pointer. Auburn trying to scrap their way back into the ballgame. Spaltro did not get him in time. Now Sucker. Frank Sucker. Setting all kinds of records. The senior from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Every time he hits one, he rewrites the record book for Vanderbilt. He gets screened by Billy Spaltro to get him open. Frank Sucker doesn't need a lot of room, especially when he's moving to his left. The left-hander dropped in that three-pointer. Nine-point cushion for Vanderbilt. You see the three-point story. Both teams need it. Vanderbilt hasn't missed from it. Secker takes care of that pass and gets it back from Pride. Gugini throws up a brick from point blank range. Uh, and Secker had an opportunity to catch the ball and go to the basket for an easy layup. Mishandled it, and, and that cost Vanderbilt a basket. Very effective in the first half, especially over the last few minutes, as the run that we mentioned a couple of minutes ago would indicate. Flanagan, a pull up. Again, forced into a fadeaway. Sector the long rebound. Frank goes crossover, finds Howard right on the wing. Right had hit three consecutively to open the game. Drew Maddox sits down, Max Whitehead into the game for him, and Austin Bates returns in favor of Gianni Cugini. As you look at Cliff Ellis, one of the nicer guys you'll meet in the profession, getting the attention of one of his players, Jefferson, lost it again. Three on two for Sucker. Great decision. The wings were not open, so Secker does not force it. He pulls up and takes that foul line jumper. Auburn having all kinds of trouble handling the basketball. A lot of turnovers here in the first half. Flanagan puts it in the hard way. Well, Auburn has turned it over, you mentioned a lot of them. I'd say 10 is a lot with a minute to play, particularly with a guard-oriented club. I mean, you'd like to think that Flanagan and Wings could control things a bit better. Bates, not there. That ball deflected off of Austin Bates, and it belongs to Auburn. Now, Auburn cannot afford to turn the basketball over that much. They're on their way to setting a school record for turnovers this season, though. Is that has been a problem for the Tigers all year long. And again, he is forced and pressed into really having to get it done without their floor leader, Nucci Nari, who was one of the most enjoyable players to watch in the SEC a year ago. Also, Chris Davis, excellent forward for the Tigers declared ineligible and unable to play this season. So Cliff Ellis has suffered through some adversity and done quite a job for Auburn. Leader counted and a foul. Bryant Smith. Good shot by Bryant Smith. Takes some contact along the baseline. Able to hang in the air and knock it in. Bates picking up his second foul. Pat Burke will be 
coming into the game. I wanted to touch on that because Cliff Ellis hasn't barked at all about some of the problems. Granted, there were transcript problems and eligibility based on that, and uh, Mucci Ars was available to leave and go play elsewhere this season. That happened. And what uh, Cliff has had to endure with respect to that, and to some extent also Nolan Richardson with the loss of a 4.0 GPA student Sunday out of Iowa. You know, at some point in time, and I know there were some difficulties and controversies with Jesse Tate and with others, certainly with ours, but at some point, someone other than the players should have to pay the price. Amazing, especially that situation in Arkansas. After 23 games into the season. Maddox rejected by Burke. Loose ball, finally, Chilius comes away with it, and then the turnover to close the half. That's the end of the first As the defensive intensity the picks up for Auburn, Jan Van Brunikoff's team outscored the Tigers at one point, 19 to four. But their lead is only six at halftime. Bob Kessley, now and up. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the bubble teams across the country. They, they could make some noise, and right now, their backcourt is winning the war of the perimeter game. Howard Pride doing a great job against the triangle and two defense. They're not paying as much attention to him, trying to take Secker and Maddox away, so Pride has stepped up and done a nice job in the first half. Let's take a look at the stats, and in looking at them, you see that both teams are mirror images of one another in style of play. Auburn throwing up more three-pointers, but only hitting one more than Vanderbilt. But the rebounding story, I'm surprised really that Vanderbilt is leading because of the, the nature of the Auburn athlete. Yeah, and, and uh, Auburn tried to play some big players in the first half, too, to take advantage of the rebounding. But Vanderbilt hung in there and done a nice job on the glass. And they have forced 10 Tigers turnovers that really is the reason why Vanderbilt went on the 19-4 run and currently lead by six. The right guard, pure power player of the week is Georgia Bulldog Shandon Anderson. In back-to-back -back wins, Shandon led the Bulldogs with 21 points per game while pulling down eight rebounds per contest and shooting an amazing 72% from the field. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Right guard, pure power, clear gel. An astoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff. Protect the one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Right guard, clear gel. Anything less would be uncivilized. That's Georgia senior forward Shandon Anderson, this week's right guard pure power player of the week. In his honor, right guard will make a donation to the scholarship funds of the member institutions of the SEC. Right guard, anything less would be uncivilized. Advance Auto Parts presents part number five, the ear. Ingeniously designed to capture sound waves, the ear allows Advance Auto Parts salespeople to hear every word you say. I put coolant in the radiator, but it still overheats. The more you talk, the more they listen. Hearing your problems out is how they figure the problem out. Only then do they use part number nine. Sounds like the thermostat. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. to play a game <laughs> sure any special rules we play with our ball now get this regulation size jam slammer basketball from churches for just $3.99 with any chicken purchase and pick up eight big pieces of chicken plus family mashed potatoes for just $4.99 we gotta get one of those balls man we gotta get one of those nuns churches gotta love it 
Dickerson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Pizza Hut, home of the all-new Triple Decker Pizza. Have one delivered today. By Alltel, telephone, wireless, information services. We've got it all. And by Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Along with Barry Booker, Bob Kessling, Dave Baker, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Second half action about to get underway. The Auburn Tigers and the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vanderbilt nursing a six-point cushion as we get the half underway. It looks like Auburn has gone to a man-to-man -man defense, gone away from that triangle and two that Vanderbilt was effective in scoring against in the first half. We'll see if the man-to-man -man is more effective for Auburn. Evans. Flanagan the loose ball. As Weems behind him. Tough pass. Burke couldn't come up with it. And Weems thought, thought Burke was going to the basket, but he moved to the block. Burke unable to catch that pass. I think the man-to-man -man defense is a better idea against this Vanderbilt club. As they pass it and move the ball around so well, have so many guys that can shoot it well, so just matching up man-to-man -man should be better for all of them. Loose ball, five on the shot. Secker throws up a prayer, but Malik Evans is there to answer. Good look to Evans. The leader deflected. Nice job by Alvin Jefferson. On the other end, Caldwell, he has two threes, make it three. Caldwell's done a good job in transition, spotting up the three-point line and knocking down those jumpers. Evans from Secker. Nice cut by Malik. And an even better find by Frank Secker. Yeah, whenever you're open, Frank Secker delivers the basketball right on time. And Leek Evans benefits on that trip. Foul off the ball going against Bates. That's his third. Here on the other end, Frank Secker moving along the perimeter, a little pick and roll situation. Evans rolls to the basket. Secker draws a lot of attention with the basketball beyond the three-point line, and Secker delivers well to Malik Evans. Flanagan, Burke the follow. No one blocked out Pat Burke. Wes Flanagan, a little dribble penetration, draw some attention, and Burke gets the easy follow dunk. Maddox goes crossover. And manages the foul. It will go against Wes Flanagan. Just Maddox able to penetrate to the basket. Really should have made that layup and had the three-point opportunity. He Fakes going off that pick and roll situation, takes it to the basket, and Flanagan kind of nips him on the feet. Maddox goes down, now he'll get two shots. He's deceptive off the dribble. I think a lot of people have uh, thought of Drew Maddox as a player because of Secker's presence, perhaps, that uh, he has to spot up for all of his jumpers. He's really improved in that area of the game, his handle and, to some extent, his strength. Uh, even in one year, and he's continuing to work on that aspect. He's more a rhythm shooter, likes to put it on the floor before he puts it in the air. Flanagan stripped by pride. Ah, Flanagan dragging that left shoulder right now. This could be trouble for Auburn. Yeah, holding it, really favoring it now. Pride wide open for the three. Evans the follow. Burt brings it down. You see he's going with that right hand. Watch how he favors it here in this sequence. Burt the runner. Gets the offensive board and Secker picks up the first one. Looks like Flanagan's going to shake off that pain and stay in the game. Good sign for the Auburn Tigers that he's going to battle through this situation. Hey! 
Flanagan to trigger it in. Caldwell. Leans the dump down to Burke. Offensive foul, a push. And it's Alvin Jefferson. Here's Flanagan getting in the lane, and this is the same type play that Flanagan hurt his shoulder on against Mississippi State. He is really in a lot of pain as he goes up and has the ball knocked away by Howard Pride. But he's in the game and looks like he's shaking that pain off. Yeah, the more he plays, the more he's able to get through it. Really a courageous afternoon's work for Wes Flanagan. Pride inside to Evans. Pride for three. The iron unkind. The hot potato claimed by Maddox. And we're hustling the offensive boards once again. Flanagan trying to keep it alive. Finally, Burke hauls it down. Almost four minutes gone in the second half. 38-34, Vanderbilt by four. Burke has come into the game as a non-starter today and claimed nine rebounds. Even when the scoring isn't going for Pat Burke, he's still an excellent rebounder for Auburn. And the scoring hasn't been there. He's really struggled on the offensive end, only two. Only two points in the game. Shot clock at five. Weems or Lena? When Lance Weems had the basketball and the shot clock was at five, you knew that Auburn was happy with that situation. Weems created off the dribble, pull-up pull jumper good, and Auburn has cut it to two. a strange looking possession looked like Vanderbilt was a little confused trying to get set up the whole possession and finally they make two passes Malik Evans is open under the bucket now has a chance for the three-point play here's pride delivering inside to Evans made a little baseline cut easy basket for Vanderbilt Malik Evans going strong to the basket and drawing that foul he has 10 in the game Auburn, a team that had trailed by as many as 11, cut it to two. But Malik Evans' athletic maneuver allows a three-point play to push the lead back to five. Every few years, the world gathers to witness an unparalleled sports spectacle, the Truckathlon. And to compete, you have to have a Ford Ranger 4x4, because you'll need a switch-on four-wheel drive for truck long jump. It's four-wheel anti-lock brakes for truck discus. And it's whopping four-liter V6 for truck hurdles. The Ford Ranger 4x4. You can't win without one. Next event, truck pole ball. Yes! Our Advance Auto Parts Smart Play of the Week comes to you from the Arkansas LSU game. Let's break down the Razorback half-court offense. Jesse Pate kicks it to Lee Wilson, who gets it back to point guard Kareem Reed. Reed will pass it around to Pate, comes back to Reed, who penetrates, and then dishes to Derek Hood, who spots Wilson underneath for the jam. That's six passes in the possession, and that's our Advance Auto Parts Smart Play of the Week. 
If you've been thinking about Ford Escort, think fast. Because right now, you can get 1,000 cash back or 4-8 financing on a 96 three-door Escort or Escort GT. With standard dual airbags, AM, FM, stereo, AC, and more, Ford Escort is priced hundreds less than Civic. But hurry, 1,000 cash back or 4-8 financing on the 96 Escort three-doors for a limited time. Your Ford dealers, the driver A 1,000 cash back on Escort. See your local Ford dealer today. Auburn and Vanderbilt trying to win impressively here and win enough to perhaps get to the dance. A former Auburn assistant, now a head coach at the University of New Orleans, George Tick Price, representing the Sunbelt Conference, will be dancing. He is going to the NCAA tournament field. And as I mentioned, uh, this is a young man that became a head coach because of a tragic loss of Tommy Joe Eagles. You'll recall Tommy Joe passed away shortly after leaving Auburn, where George uh, had been an assistant coach. When Cliff Ellis came on, Tick Price was coming with Tommy Joe to New Orleans to be an assistant. Suddenly found himself holding the head coaching spot. And now the, the glory, if you will, of Tommy Joe Eagles has passed is that Tick has had the success after leaving Auburn and is headed to the NCAA tournament as the head coach of New Orleans. Flanagan with eight on the shot clock. Oh, he got sick or airborne, couldn't finish. And again, check out the shoulder because he was fouled on the way up by Secker, who clearly stripped him that time. And any contact along that shoulder brings some anguish. He just wince every time you see Flanagan going to the basket and someone reach in on him. And that time, he's trying to go up, and Secker hits him right on that left arm. Being the tough guy going to the foul line. We talked in the coaching profession about the changes that are made. Uh, Cliff Ellis announced at Clemson at the beginning of the year that he was going to be leaving. No one knew what might happen to him. Somehow he felt confident enough that things would work out, and they did. For both Clemson and Auburn, Flanagan puts it down. Good job by Chilius to come up with a rebound. He finds Flanagan. Flanagan banks it home, and now Auburn has cut the lead to two. Turnover, DeSpaltro was the intended receiver of that whitehead pass. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a BP best player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, BP and its dealers will contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institution scholarship funds under a conference-approved plan. Weems. A rainbow J for Sir Lancelot. He has eight. And all of a sudden, the Auburn Tigers has, have worked their way back into the lead. Trailed by as many as 11 early. Whitehead, count it, and a foul. Offensive rebounding once again for Vanderbilt. Whitehead and Despaltro there for that rebound. Whitehead gets it and now has a shot at a three-point play. That's Kajini, actually, along with Whitehead, who had moved into position to get that rebound. Pax Whitehead going strong to the basket. Very good inside with the basketball. Pax Whitehead. Forty-four, forty-two, Vanderbilt. Flanagan knocks it down. Boy, he just comes right back at you. Flanagan loves that pull-up jumper. Put it on the floor, got to 15 feet. Put that one home. Now an unforced turnover from Vanderbilt. Dan Van Bredekoff wants a 20-second timeout. As Auburn has seized control of the game's tempo here in the second half. You know, Pat Burke is a pretty good passing big man, and they utilized him very well in that half-court sequence to free up Wes Flanagan. A little shovel and then the pick. He knocks 
Frank Secker off Wes Flanagan, and Flanagan hits that little pull-up jumper. We touched on the coaching ironies of uh, Tommy Joe Eagles, New Orleans, Auburn, and Tick Price. This man's co uh, a, a relative, you remember all too well, Butch Van Bredekoff, coached at New Orleans when Cliff Ellis was at South Alabama. In fact, in a tournament championship game in 78, Ellis slowed the game down to a 22-20 game, much to Butch Van Bredekoff's chagrin. <laughs> Butch Van Brennikoff had a great coaching career in the NBA also for a time and several stops in the college ranks. Indeed. Still highly thought of in New Orleans. Shot clock down again for Auburn. We'll see Wes Flanagan one-on-one. -on -one. Flanagan a duck under. Sweet move. And then the contact to follow. A dozen in the game for Flanagan. Flanagan loves that up and under move in the lane in that one-on-one -on -one situation, the head fake, and then going back to his right hand to put in the jumper. Auburn on a 10-3 run. <laughs> Auburn trailed by seven and a half. They've come out and played very well here in the second half. Whitehead. Pax puts it down. He has 11. Tied at 46. Pax found himself open along the baseline. Nice little jumper. <laughs> Howard Pride thanks R.T. Day for the call against Adrian Chilius. Pride was trying to follow Lance Weems off a screen, and Chilius drilled him on that with that screen. Well, he may be hurt, but he is still playing with his own kind of pride. Wes from Little Rock, up and under. None of these people are giving any thought to their BP gasoline. They're driving with BP Super 93, formulated to clean your engine to deliver optimum performance which allows you to concentrate on more important things. BP, we keep you moving. What does this name mean to you? It could mean software and processing from Alltel Information Services for your bank, whether it's across the world or just across the street. It could help your phone company send you accurate bills or even let your doctor electronically access your medical records. This, together with telephone and cellular businesses, makes Altel a global Fortune 500 company. And good company, on the road to the future. What if I told you everything you know about TV is about to change? Because now, there's direct TV, totally digital television. More movies, more sports, more of what I want than ever before. All through a tiny satellite dish about the size of a small pet. Stay. How does DirecTV work? I have no idea. But it does. For the DirecTV retailer nearest you, call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Utah, a lot of folks like to work on their cars themselves, and they come to AutoZone because they know they'll find quality parts, low prices, great selection, and helpful people like Rick Perry. Now, Rick's been around cars all his life, so he knows a thing or two about looking up parts and solving problems. And whether it's selling new parts or testing old ones, he's always glad to help. You see, when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice, there's just no place better than AutoZone. The 1996 Southeastern Conference Tournament rolls on from the Superdome in the Big Easy. Coming up tonight in our nighttime session, South Carolina LSU, Alabama, Tennessee. And Joe Dean Jr. will be teamed up with Tom Hammond to bring you that one. There he is, bumping his gums for the Auburn Radio Network. He and Jim Fife do the Auburn games on the most beautiful village on the plains of Alabama. A busy guy at the Southeastern Conference Tournament, our good friend Joe. Hardest working man in Nolan, Joe Dean. 
And the pressure defense, changing defense from Cliff Ellis, leads to a turnover. Yep, out of a timeout, they go the full court pressure, the full court trap, forced a turnover. Auburn really playing well here early on in the second half. Williams, a double pick by Chilius. He took out two Commodores with that baseline pick. You leave Lance Weems that wide open. He's going to knock down most of them. Weems drills the three. Look at the defensive pressure pick up and the confidence from Auburn now really flowing because of Flanagan and Weems as uh, these young men are beginning to take over this game in the second half. You see the floor story, 8 of 11 in the second half, 4 of 12 for Vanderbilt, and another turnover. Great D, they get the trap on the out-of-bounds situation and force a turnover. Chilius, that was deflected by Desfaltro, and he sneaks out. Nice pass from one of the best. Beautiful job by Frank Secker, keeping his head up, delivering down the court to Billy Desfaltro for the easy basket. So many guards don't see the guy sneak out. You know, they just don't notice him. And Secker has great peripheral vision. Always has his head up, makes great decisions on the court for Vanderbilt. He has five assists and five steals today, does Secker. And that's another pit pocket, this time Pax Whitehead, the recipient. Tough pass to make. Whitehead finally able to run it down. Nice ad lip job by Pax Whitehead. Just the way you draw it up. Let Pax roll it on the floor out to the corner and then shoot the jumper. 50 to 49. Auburn's in a little tough stretch right now. They haven't put it in the basket for a couple of minutes. Vanderbilt defense starting to pick up a little bit. We've had four ties and eight lead changes in this afternoon's game. Smith can't get it to go. And then over the back foul against Pat Burke. Cliff Ellis disagrees. Here's that vision you were talking about. Yeah, the number three guy in the SEC in assists right now, Frank Secker, looking full court to Billy Despaltro for the easy lay-in. Frank Secker doing it all for the Commodores amongst the I mean, his leaders in several categories. And Wes Flanagan, another excellent point guard. He's uh, showing us a lot of toughness today. He's taking it to the basket, even with that bad shoulder. Well, you mentioned that he who shoots best wins. He's going to sit down now as Caldwell comes in. He has seven assists and 12 points. And another turnover. Burke causing that one. Auburn defense very aggressive on the last few possessions by Vanderbilt. They set some traps and been able to force turnovers against the Commodores. Ray Donald finds Burke. It's a pretty good matchup here. Whitehead checking wings. Pretty good defender. A couple of pretty tough guys right there, too. Guys that won't back down. Off the front rim. On the deck and Pride claims it for Vanderbilt. Whitehead. Oh. That quick shot, you know, he launches it from a pretty low trajectory, but it's soft. He gets enough arc on that shot to drain more oftentimes than not that in-between jumper. Not a very good shooter, only 14% on his three-point shots this year. But he's showing a lot of confidence today and has stepped out and hit several jump shots. Whitehead has 15 points and nine of them in the second half. Vanderbilt's lead is three. Shot clock down once again for Auburn. It's a critical stage, Barry, with Donald making that one go down. It's a critical stage with Flanagan out for Auburn to maintain the tempo that they've created in the second half. Secker, Malik Evans clears to Whitehead. Now 
down to 15. Pride on the wing. Howard Pride has looked great shooting the basketball so far today. He came into this game only a 30% three-point shooter, but he's found himself open on the wing several times today and knocked down some critical jumpers. He is four for seven from beyond the arc, and he hit three in a row to start the game. Vanderbilt by four. And you knew that... Uh, at some point, Franklin Williams will have to come into the game with the energy that's been expended by the Tigers front line. Flanagan on the pine. Fellas trying to hang on to the momentum. Vanderbilt by four. There are definite reasons we created Ford Windstar to be the only minivan with available all-speed traction control and four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes. Reasons it has a wide stance for secure handling and also meets 1998 federal passenger car safety standards. We'd like to show you one more reason, but it's still a month or so away. Introducing the 1996 Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Heavy or squeezing chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea or sweating, aching in the shoulders, neck or arm. If you experience any of the early warning signs of a heart attack, this is your worst enemy. Because the longer you wait to seek help, the less your chances of surviving. Learn heart attack symptoms and the importance of immediate treatment. The Baptist Chest Pain Center is equipped to handle cardiac emergencies 24 hours a day. Because when the hands of the clock are against you, it's important to place yourself in the right hands. The newly basketball renovated Louisiana Superdome, the site of our SEC tournament. The second season underway. Tim Brando, Barry Booker, Dave Baker, and uh, Bob Kessling, our host. Here's uh, here's Vandy's offense filled with packs. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, uh, Jan Van Brennikoff design there. Whitehead rolling along the floor, getting it to the corner and dropping it in. He's seven of eight from the floor in this game. He's a streaky shooter. But, you know, he, he gets to loose balls, and uh, he'll hit a leaner here, a runner there. That kind of player that can create and give Jan Van Bredekoff the, the effort that he really needs out of it. Whitehead also very strong around the basket. Shot clock down to six as Auburn gets ready to trigger it in, and you knew Wes Flanagan had to get in soon. Cliff Ellis borrowing a bit of time for him as Donald sits down. Franklin Williams also on the floor with Burke sitting down. That substitution made during the timeout. Time winding down. Weems did manage the iron, but Malik Evans the rebound. Auburn really struggling on that position. Never really got a good shot at the basket. We're reaching a stage in the game where each possession becomes very critical. Jefferson clears it, and Whitehead over the back. First foul against Pax. The announcers for today's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. The use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference. And Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Frustration foul, as you so often see. Pax Whitehead can't get the jumper down, so he goes over the back trying to get the rebound. Caldwell, pretty good thing. Oh, Derek, you're special. He's in four from downtown. Pax Whitehead got a little tangled up trying to fight through a little traffic and then unable to recover in time. Caldwell, as Whitehead lay on the floor, hits a three. Evans. Pretty good jump stop. Gastaltro on the glass. Uh, that was a blue collar lunch pail deuce, if you've ever seen one. 57 54. Vanderbilt by three. Vanderbilt's been very effective on the offensive boards, getting several second chance points. 
sixth in this ball game. Caldwell, unconscious. He's now four of six from beyond the arc. Freshman from Brantley, Alabama. Flanagan gets the tip ball. Wesley in trouble, finds Williams to bail him out. And does fall throw the foul. <laughs> A wild exchange here. A few minutes ago, we saw Caldwell coming off that screen. Whitehead trips over one of Caldwell's feet. And Caldwell steps back and knocks down the three. But you know, when he tripped, he gave him that little stop and go move, Barry. I mean, that, that, that can help you fall down many times, right? <laughs> For a little stutter step. You had a few of those. I remember that. <laughs> Standing still, please, for me. <laughs> Give me a big screen. <laughs> Williams dry at the free throw line. Tough break there for Auburn. They still trail by three as the Williams misses both foul shots. Matchup-wise, this could be the best game of the day. On paper, it would appear to be. And uh, it's living up to the advance billing. Auburn back into their triangle and two defense, matched up on Secker and Maddox once again. So we'll see if Pride can shake free. Shot clock violation. Quality defense from Auburn, and that gets Cliff Ellis and staff on their feet. Outstanding defense entry by the Auburn Tigers. Really shut Vanderbilt down, didn't allow him a, a good chance at the basket. Well, Cliff used to sing that beach music not far from here in the uh, Alabama, Florida panhandle. He could be seen maybe doing a little jazz if Auburn were to come back and win this game. Flanagan, a floater by Wesley. 14 for him. Gritty crossover move by Wes Flanagan right around one of the better defenders in the league, Frank Secker. Point guards really going at it today. Pride spots up. Hot <laughs> shooting continues for Howard Pride on the three-point shot. This triangle and two, they're not paying as much attention to Howard Pride, and he's making them pay. Howard Pride is the emotional leader of this team. He's the guy with the talk, and right now he's walking the walk. And the Commodores' lead is four. What does this name mean to you? Across the country, it means Altel's cellular advantages. 24-hour customer service, large local coverage areas, full-service retail stores, a large selection of phones and rate plans, a full range of wireless data products and services. This, together with information services and telephone businesses, makes Altel a Fortune 500 company. And good company, on the road to the future. spent a small part of their day at a BP station. We make it easy to breeze in, get what you need, and be gone. Because even though we're BP, we understand that the best part of life is not when you're stopped at a gas station. BP, we keep you moving. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 12, the hand. A remarkable part of every Advance Auto Parts salesperson, the hand can grasp any automotive situation. My car goes... Instantly, the hand tests the electrical system, removes the dead battery, and with free installation, puts in a new Autocraft battery. All you have to do is shake part number 12. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. SEC Basketball is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. 60 to 56 Vanderbilt. And let's take a look at our Alltel play of the game. Here's a guy who's played with a lot of heart. Show us a lot of courage today. Wes Flanagan, this beautiful crossover move going to his left. A little pull-up jumper 
playing with pain with the shoulder problem he has, but has really played well and carried the load for the Auburn Tigers today. 14 points, seven assists, but again, the, the, the catalyst for this team, we talked about Howard Pride being a spiritual leader. Certainly Wesley Flanagan does the same for the Auburn Tigers. There's Howard. And a big day shooting the basketball for Vanderbilt. Could not ask for a more physical defender to check Flanagan as Caldwell gets again. Boy, the freshman is lighting it up. He gained some confidence in the first half by knocking in a couple of threes. Now he's really feeling it, looking for the basketball. He's five of seven from three-point range. And an offensive foul against Evans. Kevin's trying to set a screen on the basketball and uh, shake one of the guards free. He got caught moving. Here's uh, Evans trying to set the screen on Flanagan. And a lot of times, the officials let you get away with that little move to the basket. At that time, John Cockerney says no. Evans used his hands a little bit too much on that play. Smith, the soft left-hander for a three. Boy, the freshman, Caldwell and Smith. Anchors away. Sucker. Jefferson the rebound. Auburn with a chance to extend its two-point cushion. And both Smith on one wing and Caldwell on the other want the basketball. Absolutely right. The freshman stepping up big for Auburn. No room for Smith. Flanagan has played 32 of the 36 minutes. Shot clock down to five. Wesley isolated. Leaves it for Burke and the violation. Bates, by getting his hand in there to knock it away, forced that shot clock violation. And Flanagan waited just a little too long before he made his move to the basket. The shot clock was already at five by the time Flanagan started to penetrate, so Auburn doesn't have time to get the shot off. Excellent defense on that trip by Vanderbilt, and they needed it. Two-point game with three minutes left. We mentioned it, Tim. Very good matchup, a very competitive ball game. We're going to go down to the wire, apparently, in this one. Sucker. Malik Evans keeping it alive as his pride. And the hold will go against Alvin Jefferson. John Clark spots it and voices it. <laughs> yeah, great audio there. Clark moving in there, making the call for everybody. And Howard Pride's going to get to the line with a chance to tie. Possession arrow. Here's to Auburn. Tigers with two timeouts. Vanderbilt with three. 2.45 left in the game. And the miss at the strike. Very crucial at this stage for any, either of the teams. Both teams in the one and one situation. That was a big miss for Howard Cry. Flanagan looking to break down Howard Cry. Dribble this entire possession away. Now he's gonna, you no, know, gives up to Caldwell to make his move. It has been Caldwell on one wing and Smith on the other that have been hot. Flanagan forced it and then kept it alive only to have Evans haul it down for Vanderbilt. Big rebound by Malik Evans. Now can Vanderbilt put a basket on the boards? It's been stops rather than shots of late. But Sucker's got a shot, and how a three-pointer. The senior had missed his two previous three-point attempts, and then he finally steps up and knocks out that one. 63-62. They but won the timeout. They weren't able to get it before Auburn played it inbounds. There's the guy that wants it, but he didn't take the shot. But he's on the opposite side. He's more comfortable shooting as a left-hander on the right side of the floor, it appears. Caldwell creates. Oh, a floater! The freshman 
from Bradley, Alabama, and the cousin of Wesley Person and Aubrey Wiley. He's become the rifleman of late. <laughs> the freshman coming up very big today for Auburn. Caldwell and Smith coming through at the end of this ball game. A minute left, Secker the loose ball. Finally, Jefferson and Whitehead get tied up. The possession arrow, as mentioned earlier, to the Tigers. And they will have it after the timeout. 53.9 remaining. We're coming down to cases. Day one of the SEC tournament in New Orleans. Back after this word from your SEC station. It's tournament time at the Gerald Reed Academy with the first annual Swag Basketball Tournament, March 6th through the 9th. Come and see Alabama State, Prairie View, Mississippi Valley, Southern University, Jackson State, and Grambling. Tickets are available at all ticket link outlets and also at the Gerald Reed Academy. So don't miss the first annual Swag Basketball Tournament on the campus of ASU. Get your tickets now. The 1946 Ford Coupe. The 1955 Chevy Bel Air. The 1964 Ford Mustang. The 1971 Monte Carlo. The 1989 Dodge Caravan. ALF has been around long enough to ensure all the old classics. 50 years of experience has taught us one thing. The most important car we insure is your car. Circuit City's big computer sale is going on now through Saturday. Hurry in and get a price break on this Packard Bell multimedia computer with 75 megahertz Pentium processor and color monitor, plus 8 megabyte RAM, 540 megabyte hard drive, and more. Now at our lowest price ever, just $1249.97. Plus, get guaranteed low prices on the best multimedia computers from IBM, Hewlett Packard, NEC, Apple, Digital, and more. It's Circuit City's big computer sale now through Saturday with the lead and the ball with 53.9 remaining. The freshman, Caldwell, getting in the lane. The floater falls for him. A huge basket gives Auburn the lead, and now they have the basketball with that one-point lead. As we reset this one, we see the timeout story. Two for Auburn, two for Vanderbilt. Auburn also has a 20. The possession arrow is to the Commodores. No fouls to give for either team. Mano a mano between Van Bredikoff and Ellis relying on their guards to make a point. Secker and Flanagan. I'd expect Auburn to run the clock down, use this entire 35 second shot clock. You try to get a basket hit. Burks open, wide open. Count it and a foul. He waited for the defender to come to him to get the three. Now, that's a smart play. You're absolutely right. He saw Billy Despaltro coming, knew that he could wait just long enough to draw the foul and still make the dunk. Here's a pass inside. Burke hesitates slightly and then takes it strong to the basket. And Vanderbilt would only be down three if he gets the dunk without the foul shot. Vanderbilt dodges a bullet with Kirk missing that foul shot. A three-point game. Still a one-possession game. All right. Whitehead didn't want it. He gave it up to Sucker, and the turnover, the end result. Pride picks up the foul. Now West Flanagan steps in the line with a chance to ice this one. He's had a little trouble with that situation, though. He's... Had a game against Mississippi State where he's unable to, to hit foul shots to finish it off. And Secker and Pride, or Secker and uh, Whitehead on that last possession for Vanderbilt. A big blow with that turnover. Secker, a careless class, turns the basket all over. He wasn't ready for the initial pass that he got from Whitehead. And Pax turned down a shot. Yeah, wide open, three-pointer. Wesley Flanagan. Huge day for Flanagan. 
really come up big. I'm not sure how long he'd be able to go with his shoulder troubles, but he's handled it very well today. 15 in the game for him. He gets one of the two. 67-63, a two-possession game for the Commodores. Maddox. Burke the rebound. And a quick foul forthcoming from Drew Maddox. 13.7 left. Looks like Auburn is going to hang on to this one and come away with the victory, and then they will face the Mississippi State Bulldogs, who have been a terrible SEC tournament team. Richard Williams only 1-9 in, in his nine previous appearances at the SEC tournament. That's why you have to have a second season. You know, it just makes for entertaining, energetic basketball. This SEC tournament much more meaningful to the Vanderbilts, the Auburns, the Bamas, the South Carolinas, and to the top seed. Maddox the follow. Timeout with two seconds left. 67-65. So still a breath of life remaining in the Commodores' future. Presenting the Yardman 3-in-1 self-propelled mower. It mulches, bags, discharges, has a six-speed drive, and a powerful engine. All for the price of much tamer mowers. Yardman Mowers and Tractors. Made in America. It's not sleepy time down south anymore. From Kentucky to the Gulf Coast, from Texas to the Carolinas, business is growing and investment opportunities are springing up right in our own backyard. Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm, brings information on all these opportunities to your doorstep. They find regional stocks and bonds that are tomorrow's blue chips. That's why smart Southerners turn to Morgan Keegan for investment advice. Morgan Keegan's capital for the South. SEC Basketball was brought to you by Alltel. Telephone, wireless, information services, we've got it all. By Direct TV, it's personalized TV. And by BP Oil, makers of high-octane BP Super 93, our best gasoline. BP, we keep you moving. An entertaining afternoon in round one. Game two of the afternoon session and Auburn with a two-point lead. They trailed by as many as 11 points in the first half, going through a scoring drought of better than six minutes, but have fought back from a six-point deficit at halftime to take the lead. But Vanderbilt still with a prayer. 2.1 remaining. West Flanagan obviously has been a catalyst for Auburn today. They don't want to turn over here. Get it to Weems in the quick foul with 1.4 left. Lance Weems. A solid free throw shooter who will have an opportunity to nail this one. Senior out of Ashland, Alabama and Clay County. Two shots, guys. Let's go, fellas. With only 1.4 seconds to go, unlikely that Vanderbilt will be able to get a basket, but if Flanagan hits both free throws, it won't matter. Vanderbilt was two games under 500 in lead play. Was hoping to win a couple of games and maybe impress the NCAA selection committee. Timeout called. The final timeout for Vanderbilt to try to ice the shooter. Now it is Auburn that has the opportunity to make the, the run after finishing the season at 6 and 10 in the regular year. We'll be back. I am one with my Pizza Hut Rawlings game ball. I am a human highlight film. Ugh. I Yo, hurry up. am awesome. Come on. But I ate the whole pizza that comes with the ball. So I Stink. am incredibly slow. I'm leaving. The game ball, $4.99 with any pizza. Keep the ball, share the pizza. Fool, you'll love the stuff we're made of.
68 to 65, a three-point Auburn lead. One more free throw from Weems will no doubt end this game. Commodores would appear to be NIT bound by virtue of this loss this afternoon. Barry, there were some very big plays, big possessions down towards the end, though. None bigger than the one that Burke finished with a slam. Vanderbilt was trying to foul, and upon attempting a foul of Alvin Jefferson at midcourt, recognizing, Jefferson recognizing that he's a 54% free throw shooter, gave it up. And that left the floor unbalanced, and Auburn took advantage. That is the critical play among all of those closing possessions of this game. That dunk by Burke gives Auburn the three-point edge, and looks like they're gonna go on to win it here. He misses it, length of the floor. Not there. And the Auburn Tigers, with a sluggish regular season finish, come away with an SEC tournament victory for head coach Cliff Ellis. And with 19 wins, Auburn does not feel like they're out of the NCAA tournament mix. They feel like they're still on the bubble. If they win against Mississippi State, that's 20, so they have a shot. The non-conference schedule of Cliff Ellis not on par with some of the other teams in the SEC, but you're right, that you get to 20, you, you at least can hope and pray that maybe you have a chance come selection day. The Tigers do match up well against Mississippi State, a team that while they don't have the low post players to match up with a damp year, they, they really believe that their guard play can overcome that deficiency. Yeah, definitely. Auburn relying on Lance Weems and Wes Flanagan. Flanagan outstanding today. Also got some help from his freshmen, Smith and Caldwell. So Auburn has definitely has a shot against the Bulldogs. Our BP best players, Wes Flanagan, 36 of the 40 minutes, 15 points, nine Sunday best dishes <laughs> to go along with Howard Pride's effort, solid for the Commodores, 18 and three assists to go on a five of eight scoring binge from beyond the arc as the Commodores, who really control tempo of the first half, could not handle Auburn's frenetic pace and their athletic ability underneath. They got to more loose balls in the second half. Yeah, Auburn went away from that triangle and two defense, played very well in the second half in the man-to-man -man, and shut Vanderbilt down for the most part. Let's go to Dave Baker, who's got some special guests and some happy ones at that. Absolutely, Tim. West Flanagan, first of all, we can kind of see the little brace that you're wearing there and a lot of pain, obviously, today, but this is the time of year when you play through it. Yeah, I, you know, I've been playing with it all year long, and uh, I just wanted to come out and play today. You know, it was nothing that was going to keep me away from that. And, you know, our team came out and played hard, and we got to win tonight. That's the biggest thing we wanted. Lance, this is a team that knocked you guys off by 14 in Nashville earlier in the year. What was the difference in turning around today? Well, I think the main thing was execution. Uh, we, we set a lot of uh, great screens. We played defense. Defense a lot better than we did up there, and uh, I just think overall the team team executed and played played hard. That's 15 points, nine assists. Obviously dishing it around well, and now you move on after having rang up your 19th win. Yeah, we're looking forward to going to the second round. You know, we've been playing good in tournaments all year long, and you know we're going to win another one. The man who guided the Tigers to this victory now standing by with Bob Kessler. Okay, Dave, thanks a lot. Cliff Ellis, congratulations. This was a tough one today, wasn't it? Well, we knew it would be a great ball game and a tough ball game. Vanderbilt's very good, and uh, it was a war. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit to Vanderbilt's team. We did everything we could to stop Secker and Maddox, but Pride hit some big shots wide head, and uh, I'm very pleased with our team. They fought and fought and kept coming back, and typical story of our year, and uh, they came back and won. It was a great win for us. The effort today and performance of Wes Flanagan was amazing, considering went, his injury. Well, he dislocated his shoulder a week ago, didn't know if he would even be playing. A lot of players wouldn't be playing in that situation, but a, a, an amazing effort on his part. Uh, nine assists. It shows why he's an all-conference player, and he'll be ready to go tomorrow. You can't keep him out. All right, let's talk about the Mississippi State game. You just played them last week, so what's the <laughs> difference between that game and the one coming up? Well, you know, they've got, had that one day to rest, uh, which is going to make a difference, uh, but at the same time, I think having played them last week, you know, it's going to be easy scouting reports for both teams. Uh, you know, it, you don't have much time to prepare, but we just played each other, and uh, Mississippi State's a great ball club. They're playing extremely well. They're going to go to the NCAA, and uh, they're well coached and, and they do such a super job. We, we've got our hands full tomorrow. I think they're the second best team in the SEC. 
Cliff, let's talk about the situation now with your basketball team. You played a game here in the Dome. You got used to the environment, the atmosphere, and now is this a big advantage for your team going against Mississippi State? Well, from the standpoint of playing here, but uh, legs, no. Uh, experience on the court, yes. So, uh, you know, the, definitely Mississippi State will be fresher. I mean, they have to be, but uh, uh, I think it is an advantage to come in here and play a little bit. Cliff, again, congratulations. Your team played well today. Thanks very much. Cliff Ellis of the Auburn Tigers. So Auburn advances. So the Tigers now will go up against Mississippi State tomorrow. And again, so we're filling out. We've got it half filled out. We'll finish out the rest of it tonight. So again, congratulations to the Auburn Tigers. A winner today over Vanderbilt, 68-65. Let's go back to Tim and Barry. All right, Bob, and our congratulations.